guys. So this video is going to be story time. What happened to me this May. Um, and it does have medical parts in it. So if uh, you're squeamish or you don't want to hear about that kind of stuff, here's your warning so you can click off. <laughs> but yeah, that's what this video is going to be. Story time. Okay, guys. So this is the beginning of June. Um, this past May was a little bit rough for me and my family. And I just thought I'd do a story time and let everybody know what was going on. Um, in case anybody's interested. So, um, it started the Friday before Mother's Day. Um, I was in a lot of pain in my stomach. Um, I have gastritis, which, um, causes my stomach to have a lot of, um, acid in it. And I take Omeprazole for it every day. And this day, like, it was flaring up really bad. And it's, like, the first time it flared up like that in, like, five years. So it just felt like my stomach was burning. And so, um, I ended up being in a lot of pain. So I called the ambulance because my husband just fell asleep. It was 11 o'clock at night. And I had to make a decision, like, fast. And I couldn't drive myself. So I called the ambulance. And I was taken to the hospital. Um, they did some tests and everything. They gave me medicine for my stomach. And, uh, yeah, so they were asking me about my gallbladder to see if that was it, maybe. And, um, so, um, then I was released the next morning. And that was Saturday, and then Sunday was Mother's Day. So, Sunday... I was feeling okay in the morning, but I was still trying to be careful in my stomach and everything because I wasn't really sure or confident on what was going on with my stomach. So, um, I wanted to go visit my stepmother and my mother, and they live two hours away. So, we drove down there, and um, we did the visit, and at my mom's house, she had made spaghetti for everybody. I could not eat it. <laughs> And I think everybody was kind of like wondering why I wasn't eating it. And I was just really petrified. I was scared to eat it. Because I just thought, you know, what is this going to do to my stomach? I'm two hours away from home. And so on and so on. <laughs> so I was just sitting there and, um, yeah, I couldn't eat it. So I, di uh, I, didn't, I didn't eat it. And then um, when we left there, um, we got some food from this uh, Chinese place there. And I ordered fried rice, I only ate a few bites, but because I was starving. And then um, when we got home, we got home really late, and I still had that fried rice, so I ate a little bit of it. And I ate some chocolate that I had from earlier in the day. And all of a sudden I got this pain, but it wasn't like the um, pain, that, the burning in my stomach that I had on Friday. This was like where my gallbladder would be and it was excruciating and it started off right after I finished eating and so then it started getting worse so I thought okay let me go to the restroom um you know see if that helps so I go to the restroom I come out of the restroom and I just fall on the bed my husband's sleeping once again and I'm just in so much pain I just called the ambulance right away so I called the ambulance and um they came I was just in so much pain my husband was trying to see if I was okay and um, everybody in the house was like scared and worried. So I get in the ambulance, they gave me some pain medication that helped. Um, they took me to the hospital and uh, they did some tests. They did an ultrasound on my gallbladder and saw that I had gallstones. And um, so they wanted to act fast, get my gallbladder out. Um, they were gonna try and get me into surgery the very next day. Um, they said that if you leave it in, the gallstones can sometimes work their way down this tube and the clog it, and then it can be even a worse problem. And if you remove the gallstones, they'll come back. So it's better to get the gallbladder out, is what they told me. So the next day they got me in for surgery, and it was kind of like really fast and scary. And like right before they go into surgery, they told me that I had to remove this. And, um, there's no way I can remove this without pliers. 
because it's screwed on so tight and it's been in there for five years or so um so I told them that I can't get it out without pliers so they gave me these two pair of like those scissors that lock and um I was trying to unscrew it it would not budge and all it ended up doing was making like little marks in the metal and um couldn't get it off because they were going to put a tube down my throat so they, that's why they wanted it out um but I told them I couldn't get it out I really tried they said it's fine so I, they take me into surgery and then when I wake up I have these weird things on my legs that are like expanding with air and then um and then going back down and expanding and going back down I'm like what's on my legs and um, apparently it helps to stop you from getting blood clots so those are my legs they did five in, um, incisions one is a little bit bigger because that's where they took the actual gallbladder out the other were for the, the little microscopic camera things that they use and the tools they use in there so um, yeah so then I'm at the hospital for that another night and they want to make sure I can eat and do all this stuff before I can leave the hospital. They give me painkillers. They told me that, um, I asked them, like, is there stuff I should avoid eating? Like, what can I eat? And the nurse was just kind of vague. She was like, you're not on a restricted diet, blah, blah, blah. But I know better than that. <laughs> I'm like, uh, there's got to be stuff I should avoid. So I ended up trying to, like, look it up and trying to do some research on it. When I was leaving with my discharge papers, they did give me a paper that said some stuff on it um, to avoid but it wasn't that in depth so I was still really worried about it like what I can and can eat what's gonna make me sick because I also have gastritis so I had to do a lot of research on that so I get home I got home on the 11th okay and then the 12th is when they said I could have a shower so on the 12th that night after I took a shower I was sitting on the couch with the baby and um, he was like sleeping on my arm and I started to doze off a little bit but then he started making a weird like gurgling noise so I like sat up and I looked at him and um, he was not it looked like he wasn't breathing like he was trying to breathe his eyes were closed like he was sleeping still I tried to like tap him and wake him up and I was calling his name I was trying to get him awake he just went limp he wasn't doing anything so I called for my husband I immediately was telling him to give me the phone call 911 right now I called 911 I told them what was happening um, they came um, they took him my husband had to go in the ambulance with him because I couldn't I just got out of surgery and in the ambulance he apparently did that same thing three more times but they had him hooked up and his vitals were fine during those three episodes so that's good so they went in, they took him in, they did tests on him, you know, they checked him for everything. I went the next morning with him at the hospital and I traded my husband because I was just so worried. I just, I could not stay home. <laughs> so, um, I went there and they told me that it's most likely acid reflux and some babies can have that and sometimes they grow out of it. So that's what they think it was. So they were telling me like different tips I could use. And then for his gas, they told me to give him simethicone. Um, so I've been giving him that and he's all fine now. It's just it was really scary and they gave me a Baby CPR kit to show Everybody in our little family how to do CPR with the DVD and they made they showed it to me and had me Practice it before I left just in case they said in that instance. I I should not have given him CPR which I didn't but yeah, um but, like, if anything ever happens around you, you should know how to give an infant CPR, which I agree. So, yeah. So, that was, um, and actually, the next day when I went there, he had just turned three months old. Poor little guy. So, yeah. So, that's my story time. <laughs> Hopefully, it wasn't too gross for you guys. But, yeah. So, this month has been really hard. I'm feeling a lot better. I look like death for a couple weeks there like I looked really terrible and um I didn't even want to leave the house it looked so sick and gross but yeah I'm on a new diet now and <laughs> um just trying to avoid um fatty foods try and avoid um stuff that has a lot of grease in it and 
my son is putting blocks under the door. And yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. Um, it's been a struggle, but um, it's I'm okay now and I feel a lot better to talk about it. And thanks, thank you everybody who's been supporting me watching my videos. I really appreciate you guys. And if anybody wants to comment about anything that's happened to them, um, like with their gallbladder or anything, let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for watching and listening to me blabber on. And see you guys next time. Bye. I just wanted to take this minute to thank God for my family and all the blessings that he has given us and thank God for our health and definitely thank God for my children. I feel truly blessed and God has definitely been there for us and protected me and my family. Thank you all for watching. Bye bye.